Welcome everyone to our class on Ian Bugumara, how to plummet the depth of the Torah and understand it. Uh, we've done two parts. One part is all the technical aspect. Now we have to do a real live example inside. And then the, what the Ramchal says, uh, his Chiddush is you have to convert the text into these basic uh, um, logical models. Okay, so that's going to be a task. But so first, we're just going to go through it more or less in a um, organic way, as we're used to doing, except with a little of my, you know, charting. And then at the end, we're going to have to um, uh, format it the way the Ramchal does. But let's first understand what the text says and where we're holding. Very, very exciting. Um, the pasuk that we're concentrating on is the pasuk that says when a <clears throat> when an animal uh, destroys a um, a field, whether he steps on it or he eats it, so the owner of the animal has to pay mate of sedeo mate of karma. Has to pay with the best of his field. And Rabbi Kiva said that means you um, estimate the damage, hundred dollars worth of damage, and then if you want to pay in land, so you have to pay with the absolute best of your land. Very good. Uh, we are holding uh, in a problem that Maya brought up because uh, one pasuk that we just read says you have to pay with the best of your land. We have an another pasuk uh, that says you can pay for, albeit bore, but it also goes all over the place, uh, kesev or shove kesev or filu subin. So when it comes to paying with shavikasiv, the equivalent of money, uh, you know, movables or anything that's worth money, uh, uh, so there you can you can pay with the absolute worst. When it comes to land, it's unusual because if you're going to pay him the hundred dollars in land, you have to give him the absolute best. So what's the difference? So we had some answers, and we're really going to now concentrate on two of those answers because these two answers were never uh, pushed off by the Gemara. So the first answer was of Rev Papa and Rev Hunu read Rev Yeshua, we're just going to call him Rev Papa because I don't want to get Rev Hunu who's coming later uh, mixed up with him. Rev Hunu Bereda Rev Yeshua is uh, on the lower end of the Amarayim and, and Rev Hunu is at, all the way at the on the top of the Amarayim. So we're going, going to call it Rev Papa and Rev Huna. So Rev Papa says, he uh, uh, explains this contradiction by saying, Kol mila de meitafu, kol mila meitafu. Um, all movables are called good. De'i lo mizdamen, hach mizdamen, mamasa chrisei. Because you'll always be able to sell them. But our land is not good because you won't be able to sell it because you're limited by the amount of customers. So your 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 demand is uh, limited because you only have the few people that are around you. So therefore, the Torah said, "Lay save, lay mate, me meitav." If you're going to pay him in land, you must give the nizak the best, so that they will be lichpots a la zvine that the few buyers around will be excited to buy it and of course the Nizak just wants this is the money for the damage he doesn't want uh, uh, doesn't necessarily want land he doesn't or uh, non-money things so that's what Rep Papa said so the way that we're learning Rep Papa we'll see in a second according to the Riv is even though Kesev is not mentioned here Kesev best land and Movables, even subin, are equal payments. In other words, the mazik can pay with either one. He can give back money for his damage, he can give back the best land for his damage, and he can give back movables. Oh, what's the difference between land, you have to give out the best, and movables, you can give anything you want, as long as it has that $100 value, uh, because land uh, has a limited amount of uh, buyers. So the Torah said, give the best land. That's the shita of Rev. Pal. All three of them are equal. Okay. The Gemara then has this next question, which is associated with the original Brisa uh, 
that uh, between Rebbe Shmuel and Rebbe Akiva. And the question is, Metav, is that a relative or absolute term? What does it mean, absolute? Do, is it Metav according to world standards or Metav according to personal standards? So he said if a person has uh, his worst is equal to the best of the world, does he, can he give his worst? Because that's, that's equal to the best of the people around him because that's equal to the best. Is that Metav? Or no, he has to give his AAA stuff, which no one has around him, which is super, super duper Metav, uh, to pay back to the damage when he does the damage and he wants to pay back. So that was a question, and the Gemara is done with it. And in the end, the conclusion is that it's a subjective best. So if, if he, he can't give, even though his worst is equal to what all the neighbors have called best, he has to give his best of the best. Okay? Now, that's a very long sugya with a lot of ramifications, which we, we didn't do, but it's not uh, applicable to our problem, but it's a big, big uh, sugya. Okay, then all of a sudden at the end of the sugya, here's my line, <laughs> two dots there. At the end of the sugya, there's no two dots in the, in the Gemara. All of a sudden, Rev Huna comes along and he says, Oh, Kesevo Metav. That's what he says. So Rashi tells us that Rev Huna is really arguing with Rev Papa. The placement of this word Omar. This is one of the things that tells us. According to this Girsa, Rev Humana Omar, you only say Omar at the end when you're fighting with another opinion. Rev Papa Omar and Rev Huna Omar. Rev Papa said what he said. Now Rev Huna, Rev Huna has a different position. If Huna was starting a new issue, it should have said Omar Rav Huna. So Rashi says that this is a continuation of the problem between the pursuit of Metav and Kesev and Shavi Kesev. So Rav Huna says, O Kesev, O Metav. Then, in other words, you have to pay for your, you only have two choices, not three. Rev Papa said you have three choices, Kesev, Metav, and Shavik Kesev. Rev Huna says you only have two choices, that's Kesev and Metav. So Rev Nachman asks him and says, wait a minute, there's three choices. There's Yashiv also. And he says, no, that is only when you don't have Kesev and Metav. Okay, so he argues with Rep Papa. Rep Papa says that that Yashiv the Rabbi Shavik Kesev Fil Subin means it's an equal alternative that the Maza can use to pay for his damage, and Rev Huna says no, not so. It's only when you don't have Kesev and Metav that's the only time you can use uh, Shavik Kesev Fil Subin. Omar says, wait a minute, isn't that obvious? I mean, it's better to get something than nothing. It says, no, it's not so obvious because you might have thought if that, that Rev Huna would have said that not only can't you, can't you um, use it by the average, you can't use it. In other words, if you have Shavakesev, or actually the Torah, I'm sorry, the Torah didn't write Yashiv to Rabba Shavakesev, so Rev Huna would have said, no, the Torah says you can only use Kesev and Metav, and if you have Metav, then you have to go out and translate it into money, okay, and then give him money because it's worthless. So Kamashman, the Pasuk said, yes, you have to say, no, if you don't have it, you can use it, okay. So that's where we're holding in this issue. We have the Gemara ending with two answers about what you can pay back. One, Rev Papa you can equally pay back with Kesev, Shavik Kesev, and Metav. And really it says, no, Shavik Kesev, uh, if you assume, and that's only if you don't have Kesev and Metav. So those are the two positions that we're left with. The Gemara doesn't eliminate this one. The Gemara doesn't eliminate Rep Papa. So that, of course, is going to cause a lot of uh, difficulty. One of the things that we're trying to do is understand, well, what do people talk about? Okay, what's called a problem? So this is a problem because we're left with two um, answers, and it's a halachic problem because we don't know what to do. You can't do both of them. It's not a, it's a suffix. The Gemara leaves us hanging. So we said at this point we have the 
the riff comes in. Look at him one second. And he says the halacha is like Rev Papa. And then, and that's these, this yellow column of the Sephardic schools. And then we have Rameinu Tam. He says the halacha is like Rev Huna. Okay? So we're trying to understand what are the factors that push them one way or the other. Since the Gemara does not to tell us which way it is. How do they know which way to go? Well, I hope your hands say it's a suffix. I don't know. But they say emphatically, the riff says emphatically, it's, it's, it's Rip Papa, everything is equal. And the, the Rabbeinu Tom writes in Sefer Yeshua emphatically that when it comes to Nazikin, you can only use uh, Shavi Kesev if you don't have Kesev and, or, or Metav. So that's what we're holding. Now I'm getting involved. Other sheetas will we'll pick them up as we go. Okay. So last time we got together, we did the Tosfos. Okay, but just as a quick review, here is Rev Pop. Uh, here's the riff. Uh, one second, I just have this and have to move on the side. Okay. Here's the riff. The riff very briefly says so the riff says the Torah when it talked about Metav Sadeh and Metav Karko said the best but that's only when it comes to land but when it comes to Metatlan you can give anything like whom? like Rip Papa right? and he says the following line, Even though Rev Huna and Rev Asi argue with Rev Papa, There's the important part. The, he now tells us why the halacha is like Rev Papa. Because Rev Papa is a Basroi. He's in the chain the way down on the bottom. Okay, let's get that for us. What is else of that? Okay, here's the tonight. We'll just go down a little more and we'll see the Amarayim. Here's Rev Huna, very high up. Rav and Shmuel are on the borderline there. They're like Tanayim. Uh They can't argue. Uh, Rav Huna already is an Amara. But he's very, very close. He's a student of Rav. And all the way down here, uh, one, like 150 years later, something like that, 140 years later, you have Rev Papa. Okay? And Rev Huna Breda Yeshua. Okay? So there, the, the, the rule is that when it comes to Pesach, we always Pesach according to the chronologically later authorities, which is Rev Papa. And that's what the riff says. Okay? Okay. We'll skip Rashi. Rashi's mashmut of these also holding like the riff in a few places, but last time we met we did Tosfos. And it's also very important to see the form here. Okay. This Tosfos uh, were, were not just Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam, as we saw, was the first Balei Tosfos. Uh, oh, I didn't put the chart back again. Okay. Oops, wow, 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 what's going on here? No, nope, that's not what I want, and that's not what I want either. I have to get my bearings here. I didn't make a look, but okay. Um, um, Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbi Yaakov ben Meir, is uh, 71, okay? We're going to be dealing with the rush. He's already 100, 100 almost 100, he was born 150 years later, okay? So, and M is... Uh, you know, he, well, we have the Ran is still reshown, but we're getting on the borderline of the Achronim after 1300. So, anyway, a lot of Bali Tosfos, the Bali Tosfos Shalanu it is what we call our Tosfos. Who exactly put it together? You can find out. I don't know exactly all the history. I looked a little bit, but it's it's rather complicated. But it doesn't really matter. 
we're going to see, we, we're looking at Rabbeinu Tam, uh, in the eyes of the Bali Tosfos, because you see the Bali Tosfos is going to be quoting Rabbeinu Tam, go, going to be quoting the Rif. So this is after Rabbeinu Tam, Tosfos saying, look, let's look at our masters that came before, the Rif and Rabbeinu Tam, let's compare them and let's see what they say. So that's exactly what they do. Um, here. And here's the Tosfos, right? Here's the Tosfos. He first brings Rashi, and he says that Rashi says that Rev Huna, by the way, this is on Rev Huna, right? Now remember, Rashi brought, I just want to bring one other point, Rashi brought up that there was a problem that we mentioned right in the beginning, that there was this, this interlude. In other words, we had the answers, uh, we had a biased question between uh, Metav and Shavikesev, and then we had four answers ending with Rep Papa, then there was this tangent, not really a tangent, but there was this, let's call it a tangent, talking about uh, how do you consider Metav, is it objectively or subjectively the best? And we had Rev Huna popping up, and, 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 and Rashi explained that there, the break was necessary to finish off the Brysa. Oh, that's what he explained, but that's a problem, that's one of the problems that we have to deal with in understanding this text, why is there the break? If Rav Huna really is talking about Rav Papa, then he should have been brought with the other uh, four answers, or brought, brought after or before Rav Papa, since he's uh, previously stated. So, to say that this is the same argument uh, has that problem. Why is there the break? And Rashi answered that. Um, Tosfos um, says, not Rashi, but Sarech Lama his speak l'sayim divrav achihik shelo. Again, lo, you know, wow. You just have to be involved in the piece to know what that means. That means that first Huna said, O kesev o metav, and then Rev Nachman said, what do you do with Yashiv? And then Rav Huna came back and said, well, Yashiv is when you don't have Kesev and Metav, correct? So, uh, if Rav Huna was going to explain the two Pesukim, Yashiv, Kesev, and Metav, then he should have just said Kesev and uh, Metav, and if you don't have, do uh, Shav Kesev. Why did Rav Nachman have to interrupt? So, you have to say that really, if he's explaining the three variables in those two pasukim, that he was going to do everything, and Reb Nachman interrupted, which is, again, a weak point in saying that Rev Huna is talking about Rev Papa's issue. Okay, so we have two weak points to, to against those people that say that that Rev Huna is talking about the same issue. One break, and two that. Rev Nachman uh, should have held his horses, and Rev Huna should just explain exactly what he meant. This is how I learned the two pesukim: Kesef is equal to Metav, and and Subin is only if you don't have both. Okay? You with us? <laughs> I am here. I'm here. Very good. Okay. I'm I'm giving a big review again because it's all necessary. Because we're going down, down, down into these things. Okay. So because of that, now remain in the Tosis we did last week, but because of that, the, this weakness of Rev Nachman and the unstated, I mean, he, in other words, he didn't, the Tosis did not bring down what Rashi really said about this break, but, be, but because of these problems, Tosfos tells us, the Istigar say Omar Rav Huna, Vamas Nisan Koi. Now, when we say Omar Rav Huna, when he's, it means an original statement. And now he's, he's talk, commenting not on the verses, but he's commenting on the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, Meitava Aretz. That's what our Mishnah said. Sar Shav Hashem, Shadak and Lahazik, Shemir Son Alecho, Kazazik Kavamazik, Lashalam, Shulem Ezek, the Meitava Aretz. That was our Mishnah. So he wanted to say that don't think our Mishnah is Dafka. The only thing you can pay back when you do damage is Meitava Aretz. So it's not so. You can also do kesef. At which point, Rev Nachman now in, doesn't interrupt. He says, wait a minute, uh, there's another alternative. And so he said, no, that's not an alternative, only when you don't have kesef and metav. So if he's talking on the Mishnah, you don't have to say Rev Nachman is interrupting. If, if his aim is to explain Pesukim, the Pesukim have three variables. Kesev, metav, or kesef, shavu, kesef, and metav. If he's on the Mishnah, he's just explaining why the Mishnah only said uh, Metav. That was his aim, and 
a good question is why did he why did you say it's Labdafka and only the only thing left out of the Mishnah was Kesev? So he explained to him because I hold that that's uh, that that Shavu Kesev is only when you don't have Kesev and made up. So there we've gained a point in the Gemara in the in the coherence of the Gemara. In other words, in the Seder of the Gemara now, if we say that Ravuna is not talking about the Pesukim, so then we don't have to explain why there was this whole interruption. Okay, fine, it was the Brysa, it was everything, but but it was the subject of the Pesukim, was a sub, really the subject was the Brysa, and the Brysa had the whole machlok between Rabbi Shmoel and Rabbi Kiva, and then once we said it was how much was in what species can the mazik pay with? So then we had the pesukim, and after that we had more to talk about the brisa. And now we have a new point. It's a related point, of course. No one said no, but we we don't have we we solved the problem of the break because that was all involved in the brisa of Rebbe Kiva and Rebbe Shmuel and the pesukim. Uh, and now we're having a, a, a new a new problem here because our Mishnah doesn't say what we just learned from from the Bryce and 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 uh, all the Pesukim. It says something else, and we do have a Hiddish here of Reb Huna. So we saved that step. Okay, we saved the step by by the Girsa of Omer Rav Huna. We saved the step of having to explain the break and having to explain this uh, or, or, or to say the dochek that Reb Nachman had interrupted. Okay? Now, we're going to get deeper into this, but this is just a review of, really, of, of what we did. Okay, so that was, that was uh, Tosvos first brings Rashi and he tells us there's two gearses and fine. We don't know the significance of that more than it solves a problem. You don't have to say Reb Nachman interrupted. It's about the only significance that you know we could see, unless you can see a bigger significance. But that's that's all it does. Now he brings after he brings that he brings safe Alphas. Now last time we together we looked at Reb, uh, Reb Alphas. He doesn't doesn't have the words there Reb Huna Omer or Omer Reb Huna, correct? It's just he has a halachic uh, summary of the Gemara as it travels through age and he tells us the following the the Rav Huna bread Rav Yishu, that what the uh, here we'll just look at it okay all he says so he, we don't know what his girsa was correct He's just explaining to us the din of Metav, because as the Gemara flows, he has to tell us what's the conclusion. So he says, Metav is only limited to land. That's it. And the halacha is like Rev Papa and not like Rev Huna. That's all he tells us. Okay. Uh, but we don't know anything about the gears of problems. Okay. Um, Tosfos after bringing Rashi and explaining that there is a gears of problem, brings... Reb Alfas, and Reb Alfas, as he says, has two points here, and that's why I, I'm, I break this up because when you when you just read it as one line, you don't have the sensitivity, and and all the people are being very sensitive to the text. They do it all in their head, of course, but we're doing it visually. Okay, anyway, Reb Alfas says the Reb Huna Reb Shua Reb Papa Da Al Pligia Dadi. That means Rav Papa and Rav Huna Rav Yeshua over there are arguing with Rav Huna here. Okay. Um, Right? So he makes a clear statement that they're definitely Ravuna and Ravasi who came a little later on that said Kes is like Karka, okay? But they're arguing with this for a papa because they're, they're the, the Ravuna says you can and Ravasi later on they're gonna say that you can only use a Shava Kesiv when you don't have Kesiv and Natav and Rav Papa says you can use it equally. So um the Rev Alphas tells us there is an argument, right? Now, if there is an argument, the text that said Omar Rav Huna should be preferable, correct? 
I mean, Rev. Huna Omer, I'm sorry, Rev. Huna Omer, or Rev. Rev. Huna Omer. When we said that the Omer is afterwards, it means argumentation. So since he holds his argument, then we can infer from that that he's holding the text that says Rev. Huna Omer, although he doesn't say the text, but he does say that there are arguments. So at one point, he agrees that there's an argument here. It's not like a new issue. Uh, if it's a new issue, could it be that they weren't arguing? Maybe. But he says, yes, they are arguing. And the horror about the same issue. The inhu, that means Rev Huna, Rev Shua, and Rev Papa, they hold Kol Mile Meitavu Vefil Subin. And Rev Huna disagrees. He says, the Lohavi Meitav Ela Kesev Okarka. And you can only use Subin if you don't have them. Good. That's point one that he brings up, the Tosfos and Rev Alphas. And point two is the Pesach. He holds like Rev Papa, Rev Huna, Rev Rev Shua. Why? Important point. De Basroy. So that's the Tosfos summary of Revalfas. Then the Tosfos goes to the third position, which is Rebbeinu Tam. And he tells us that Rebbeinu Tam does not hold like Revalfas because he holds that there's three dim, and the first one that he brings is Nazikin o Kesvameta vi Ilesle of Filusubin. So who is he holding like? Rabbeinu Tam? The riff is holding like Rabbeinu Tam? The riff is holding, no, 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 I'm sorry. The, the, the Rabbeinu, the, we have Rav Huna and we have Rav Papa, just to brief it. The, the riff is holding like Rav Papa. But here, the Rebbeinu Tam tells us the Halacha in the Zikin. Who is this Rebbeinu? Rebbeinu Tam. Right, so he, he's saying that um, Rebbeinu Tam is saying that Oikas of Anetav. And if he doesn't have here, he gives Subin. Right, so Rebbe. that was like, um, that was, that was like Rafuna. Exactly. I just want to make sure that you're with me. I could talk. And, you know, <laughs> no, I could, you know, there's so much here. I, you know. Good, that's it, simply. So here we see that Rev Rebbeinu Tam holds like Rev Huna, right? That's Rev Huna's position. Kesev and right. Meitav, and if you don't know, he doesn't hold like Rev Papa. Fine. Right. Okay, we, uh, we went through the other variables, um, which we don't need now. They're, I mean, they're, of course, important because Tosfos, again, sees all of Shas. So whenever, as I told you with the web, you adjust one string, you're going to now realign other things. So when you realign uh, this uh, uh, Nazikin with Rev Huna, who knows what ramifications are, and he's going to tell us all these other cases of Powell and, and Balchal. But we're not going to get into that. We did that last week. Now... And we're going to skip the Ron, okay, and we're going to go right to the Rush. Okay, now why did I skip the Ron? I, I skipped the Ron because they're going to, he's going to together with Rebeno, with the, the Rambam. So before we go to the next level, we're going to deal with those, but I wanted to go right to the Rush. Because as we saw, the, <clears throat> the Rush is a, a, a very late um, uh, a Rishon. And let's what let's watch what he does in comparison to what we just saw at Tosfos, and let's see what type of problems he uh, he deals with. Okay, so we saw that the the Rebbeinu Tam just really laid out for us that uh, that uh, uh, the Riff and Rebbeinu excuse me, the Tosfos we just read laid out that there was a difference between the Riff and Rebbeinu Tam halachically. Okay, and. Uh, now let's watch the rush. What he does. Okay, so now you're on. You're on after that. <laughs> Always short introductions. Yeah. I wouldn't I mer. I kesef I meitav. Pirush Rashi. I'm reading it from the screen, and I don't have this in front of me. No, yeah, yeah, no problem. Shabbalat Haritz. Shabbalat Haritz Kroid Lael. So right, the Rashi says the way he spoke the same. The Bar Rashi of Shulav Nachman was Omar Vaz. Omale. Omale. The Krohechimatarti, Hachimatarti. In main like Kesef, I meet of Kol Mila meet of who. Vole Matzi Amalei Zil Tarach Mezavin. The Es like Kesef I meet of Loitim Loishava Kesef. Ochein Kasev Rav Alpes. 
So, so he's let's... saying Rashi is, is saying that we're answering the theory before, and right. that Rav Papa did not have a um, did not have a chance. Rav Huna rather, Rav Huna did not have a chance to finish until Rav Nachman asked him. Good. And he explained to him that if he doesn't have kesef or meitav, then call me meitav who, and he can't tell him go and sell it. But if he has kesef or meitav, he cannot give him shava kesef. In other words, he's saying it's a hierarchy. You have to first give kesef or meitav. If he doesn't have, then he could give him the the metal, the the um, um, yeah, metal the shava kesef. Shava. Yeah. Shava kesef. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. saying the same thing. Exactly. So the rush is putting together Rashi and Rev Alphas. Okay. Uh, he's going to explain Rev Alphas in one second. But just a few little notes here that um, Rashi himself never said that. Um, excuse me. Rashi did say that Rev Hun is also coming to explain the Psukim that were brought above. That Rashi did say, but this second piece below his speaker sign, the Rav Achikshelo Rav Nachman, you see, Rashi never said that. That was Tosfos. Okay, right. at points because they're they're important differences to see the style again. But you see, the Rush incorporates what Tosfos says right away into Rashi. Okay, he says with Sati that when when Tosos brought Rashi, he also said should boil the Torah to Kroy Delel, which Rashi did say. But Tzarech Lomar says Tosfos Shelo his speak l'saim de Ravat Shelo Rav Nachman. Okay, so that was Tosfos's in, uh, interpretation on Rashi. Okay, the Rush already incorporates that as if that's Rashi himself. Okay. Now I'm not going to make a difference here about the two, but it's just it's interesting to note that in the in in the 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 way that we learn is is that we accept the premises of the of the of the of the generations before us. Okay, and that's that's an important thing in the Masari, uh, and that's the Rush. The Rush is simply okay. In in our analysis, really what Rashi said and what was said of Rashi, because we know sometimes that can cause differences. Okay, so uh, so after it was interrupted by Rav Nachman, uh, this is all Tosfos. Uh, uh, Rashi never said this. Okay, in other words, all Rashi said Shabola called the Leel, right? And this, although he speaks the same, it was all Tosfos and. So you see how the rush is also a um, how can I say an abbreviator? No, a summarizer. He's paraphrasing, okay? Because he believes right. that you he 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 understands that this is written for a person who is at a high level of learning, who who already read Rashi carefully, read the Gemara of course carefully, okay? And he just has to quickly summarize, and he'll he expects you to know what Tosfos said already, and he expects you to know, of course, what the Gemara said in Rashi. But for us, we have to be very, very uh, clear about what was said and what was commented upon. Very good. So he put everyone together. He put Rashi together with this, uh, definitely what Rashi did say, that Rev Hun is fighting with Rev Papa, and that we have to say there was an interruption of Rev Nachman uh, before Rev Huna could finish his explanation, and then Rev Huna said what we said as the Gemara ran, you know, okay, you give Kesev and Meitav first. If you don't have, then you can give Shavik Kesev. And this, by the way, he adds, is what Rev Alfas says. Let's read it further. Now he's going to explain Rev Alfas. That so what? The Rav Papa, the Rav Huna, the Rav Yeshua, Pligi ad the Rav Huna, the Savri, the Chomni with Meitav, Uvafi Lusubin. So Rav Papa and Rav Huna and Rav Yeshua held that everything is metav, even subin, meaning even metalpolin is called metav. Correct. O pasak kid Rav Papa, Rav Huna and Rav Yeshua, the inun basroi, but the psak of the of the the rift is like Rav Papa and Rav Huna and Rav Yeshua, who are basroi. Because they're basroi. He 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 right. gave the pasak like Rev Pop and Rev Unbremsha because right. Right. they were Basrai. Because Basrai, so in other words, he's saying that everything is all on one level, that everything is called Meitav. Exactly, and he didn't hold like Rev Huna. Now, if I ask you, which no one is saying, well, 
why would you think to hold like Rav Huna? Why would you think to hold like Rav Huna? Right. Like, remember uh, that the 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 Rav, Al, Rav, Rav Alpha said here, Va'afal P the pligi Rav Huna Ravasi, Kaimalan Karev Papa Devasru. Interesting. An, what is an Afal P in Derek Tefunos? It means the reason you would have said the opposite, right? Well, right, right. I, if it was... Well, let's go back and understand. Rav Papa and Rav Huna, Rav Yeshua, um, maybe he doesn't like their tarots on the, on the, uh, on the steer and the psukim. Who doesn't like the Rishonim. Ah, maybe, maybe you were saying Rav Alphas didn't think that that was a good, right. that was a, 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 the, the simplest understanding. So right. then why do he say, why do he have to say that the, the only reason that he's um, Pesach, well, like Rav I meant, Shua? I meant, the other, oh. I meant the other way around. Maybe oh, exactly. Rav Huna's Tarot to say that, that the Tarot really is that, that the Sukkim that are saying that it's one or the other really means to say that if you don't have one, then you do the other. Maybe that's not as logical as saying that really it's the, the Sukkim will come and tell you it's all the same. So even though he would want a Paschal like the first ones, like Rav Papa Rav Huna, Rav Yeshua, because that's more logical, but since Rav Huna is Basroi, he's going to go with Rav Huna. No, Rav Huna is not Basroi, chronologically. Who okay. who? Again, you were right, I think, the first time. Who were the later... Yeah. So, oh, so Papa and Rav Yeshua are saying everything is the same. So let's go through the logic again. We'll do the logic either way. Rav Papa and Rav Yeshua, who are Basra, are not as logical as Rav Huna, who is a Kadmine, who came earlier. Now let's go figure out, you know, let's try to apply and see which one is more logical. But so what, what we would have to back into and say is that um, Rav Huna, who is saying that the, the steel in the Psukkim is answered by saying that you have two levels, that first you're supposed to pay, um, first you're supposed to pay either, either um, Kesef or Metav, and then if you don't have that, then you can pay even Metalpolin. He's saying that's really more logical than saying that everything is all the same, except that we're stuck with Rav Papa and Rav, and Rav Huna and Rav Yishua, who are Basroi, so we're going to pass like them. Very interesting. Very I interesting. Think. No, you 100% say it in a sense. And uh, I, would, I would add why it's more logical to say Rav Huna. Okay. Now remember, I'm going to add to to your theory, even though, by the way, the rush is not going to. I don't believe he holds that, but in the Afal God, but doesn't matter. Remember, if we remember our our setup, um, we've always we always held that Kesev was better than um, we we. Excuse me. Just give me one second. Um, yeah, there was a revolution we said, a Copernican revolution we said with Rev Papa because Rev Papa put land under Shavakesev, right? His his hop was that we we always thought that land was better than Shavakesev. That's a simple pashat. If I ask you, what would you rather have? If you if you're not going to get money, what would what would you rather have, land or Shavakesev? So land is, you know. Much more desirable than Subin. Subin, right. what can you do with this right. stuff? I mean, right. you, know, right. you have a whole house for who? Who wants Subin? How many people are around? Okay, so you go somewhere and you can dump it. But but land, everybody wants. Even bad land, you can you know build on. You can do something. Land is always intrinsically valuable. It's desirable. So Rev. Papa made a big revolution to say that here the Torah holds that land is worse than Shavu Kesev, and only the best land is good, and he gives us a svara because he switched the factor, okay, the Bechina, as we learned in, in Der Tfunos. In the Bechina of getting your money back easy, it's easier to get money back from a Talpun than it is for land. But as far as the Bechina of desirability, if I ask you simply, what would you rather have as payment, land, even worse land, or some uh, packages of soup, into, so you say, I'd rather have the land, okay. Uh, 
So it was a chiddush of, and by the way, Rav and Abai, none of those, everyone was holding that Shavik Kesev was, uh, that, excuse me, that land was better than Shavik Kesev. It was only Rav Papa that turned the tables up and, he, and, he, and, and, and said that no, it, there's a Bechina where Shavik Kesev is better, right? So there, there I'm uh, agreeing with you that you could say in Svara, Rabuna is, is much better because he also holds that Shavik Kesev is a filu sumen, it's a filu, even the, is, is worse than land, okay? That's so bad that you can't even give it l'chatchila. You can only give kesev meita, right? So afal gav, afal gav that in svara Rav Huna is, is, makes uh, uh, more sense. We still going to hold like Rav Papa, Rav Huna, Rav Yeshua because they're okay. So that's a that's a good theory, and it's very important to say a theory because there is an afal gav here. Another simple theory would be. Um, that Rev Huna was mentioned uh, last. Okay, in other words, he had the last word. If, if you have, if you have uh, five people brought down in an argument, so the, the, where the Gemara ends also is important. I mean, that's just another reason, you know, just another simple reason maybe right. why we should sock like Rev Huna. Now maybe we'll find out other ones, but the question has to be asked because Rev said Afalgav. So. Good. So the, the the deciding factor in halacha was basroi. Good. Right. right. Now let's read Rabbeinu Tam here. Rabbeinu Tam pasuk Rav Huna bidislei. In other words, if you have again, yeah, bidislei what? I mean, right. If you have, in other words, you put them if you have. In other words, yeah. If you have kesef and meitav, you have to give it. Well, in other words, because what he's really saying with bidislei is that there's no nafkamina between Rav Huna. And and uh, Rav Huna and Rav Papa Rav Huna Rav Yeshua, if he has Kesef or Meita. Sure, there. Oh, you mean only? What if, happens if, if, if he has all three? Right? If he has all three. Uh, all three. If he has all three, I don't know what does Rav Papa Rav Huna Rav Yeshua hold that he could. Anyone. Uh, he would human. Yeah. That's what it sounds, right? Yeah, that's what we're that's what we're understanding. Okay, that's what that's how they're learning. Well, definitely they're learning that that way. That they're all equal. So Ravuna, okay. So, okay. So what does it mean? Uh, he holds like Ravuna Bidisle. Okay. So Bidisle means when he when he has kesev, uh, uh, and when he has kesev or land, then you have to give it. Okay. And because of the safe, we'll get continue. Because of the Sefer Yashat, I should deem him So this is really like Tysus also said this, but he didn't say it's from the Sefer Yashar. But he said there are three dinim in Parayan. Number one is Ben Zikin, which is I case of I meta of Kirav Huna Bid Islay. He lets the call me the meta. So it's two different levels. That's either Kesaf or Metav, and then if he doesn't have then it's anything else. Right. Because everything else could be called Metav if it's that is which is So Balchayv, his first right is to cash Zuzim. Um, if he, if once, yeah. Once he has, once he has cash, once he has cash, if he has a mate of or any type of land or any type of uh, a kesiv, what well, he must give the cash. He is lezuze lo matzi lesaluke elabazuze. I don't care what you have. Uh, if you have land, you have shavikesiv. You can have. You must give when it comes to balchov zuze money. Okay. If you don't have. Right. What's if you don't have the lay slay number Roman numeral two over there, whatever it is? The e e um e less way, I believe less way is a lamb and built out by ice to lay Zuze kid the Isa Hassan. He doesn't have Zuzim, we don't have to tell him go and bring Zuzim. So what exactly. does he do? You can ex you can accept the, the metal and accept the car cough. No, no problem. But that's only if he doesn't have money. Okay, so in, in now, the kid Excuse me. Right, if he has that money, so then he just gets he just in the top one. 
yeah, give them a talpon or I suppose give them land too. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Give them anything, but, but definitely give them talpon. When okay, right. he right, he can only give them a talpon definitely when he doesn't have money. Right. Okay. Good. And that's the no, not it's worse. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, that's 100 percent. That's good. And the lokeik shenim samechitos nami dinahachi. It's the same din, and he brings a proof. Yeah, shenim sam betoyz lemekach nami dinahachi. The marshal coming para kapara, and a lokeik who bought something betoyz is like a balchay. It's interesting he sticks that in. It's like there must be other um, types of of uh, debtors and and creditors who have the din of a balchay, and he just decides to pick on a lokeik that. That was nimtza b'tayis. Well, maybe it's the only one. I don't know. Maybe yeah, exactly. Like that that that'd be very interesting. You know, okay, okay. <laughs> That's a very legitimate question. I mean, you know, why he picked this one is are these, are these an exhaustive list? You know, okay. Good. To, right. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. The third category is pile. He lost the ball by zuzi amalei zil parak by six nemuch parak by by shuli. So a pile has a certain kayak. He is expected to pay cash. He put in his day's work. He is expected at the end of the day to be able to walk home with his cash. And you could tell the balabayas, if you don't have the cash, go and sell your property and, and um, right, bring me money. Uh, bring me money. Right. Right. Okay. Good. So that's the, number two. So the first thing that the, is the rush. The rush first summarizes for. Us. Excuse me. It, the rush brings down Rashi. Right. And this says it's a machlokus here. Right. Um, uh, I explain Rashi again is a is a parish. He's, he just explains what Rashi says about Arafuna, right? If Kesev and Meitam, and if you don't have Kesev and Meitam, then you can give uh, Subin. And uh, Rashi uh, uh, Rav Alfas agrees with Rashi that there's an argument here, but he doesn't end up with Rav Huna. He ends up with Rav Papa because they're Basroi. Okay. Right. That's why I said just maybe simply not in Svara, just because Rav Huna was the end of the end of the uh, the snow to the end, we should hold like him, okay? But Rav Papa Rav says no. The rule is you go according to Basroi. So even though the last word is Rav Huna, we have to go back and and hold like Rav Papa. And then we had Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam. He quotes Rabbeinu Tam, which is what we know. He's holding like Rav Huna. Okay, very good. Right. Notice, notice that uh, Rabbeinu Tam does not tell us why he's holding like Rav Huna. Okay, so that's right. going to be that, that's right. going to be okay. The 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 riff tells us why, but Rabbeinu Tam doesn't tell us why. He just says that's the halacha, and that's it. Okay, now is that here. A stylistic thing? No, no, it's not stylistic yeah, so, at all. Uh, yeah. That will lead us to the next part of the rush. The rush is bothered with that now. The rush is bothered with, well, why? The rush questions that's come up right now is why uh, didn't Rabbeinu Tam agree with the riff? What did he find wrong with the riff? Right. You could say the right. last word simply. You could say the last word was Rav Huna. Fine, but there's a rule that you always follow the Basroi. And the Riff said, "Afal Gav, I know you. You might want to say the the the, the, the last in line was Rav Huna, but still we have a rule following the Basroi." So Rabbeinu Tam just said the halach is like Rav Huna, and he doesn't explain to us why. Right. Right. Now here is where the rush come in, and this is what he's. He, this is a question that you're forced to answer. Okay, you're forced to answer this question. Well, how? That's a, a, a very logical uh, principle that we have. So, what was R Rabbeinu Tom's reason for not holding like the riff? Right? right. It's a beautiful. It fits like a glove. I mean, it, it. The question must be asked. That's what I also want to show here. That that the questions that are asked that are just not the Agdil Torah Yadir. Okay, we want to have a little credit in the Lama Bay, Ask some nice questions. This question has to be answered now, especially if you're like the rush. Who is also? Uh, I mean, it's a halachic situ situation here. You know, this is not just a, you know, a question of kachim. I mean, here we have a practical situation uh, of paying for damages. We have a machlokus and the gemara that's not uh, resolved, and we have now the the rush's kadmonim, which is Rabbeinu Tam and the Riv holding different positions. The Riv tells us why. No matter what reason you're going to give me, I'm going to hold like Rabbi Papa because he's Basroi. And Rabbeinu Tam simply, you know, says that's not the halacha. 
So we have to remain with them. But what did you do with Basroi? Right? Right. So that's what he says right now. <laughs> Let's read three. Yeah, I shouldn't have done. I I only did that. To, I don't know what simon is. You know what I mean? I don't know if I should. I I, just, I have to develop a simon where a highlight. I, I didn't want to use an underline because an underline usually means a link. But what can I do? We'll have to figure that one out. All right. But anyway. Okay. What can I do? <laughs> it, it, you know. The light blue is fine. Okay, good. Uh, I, mean, I just explained my legend. Yeah. Okay, let's just leave it that way. Okay. Okay. Good. So now the question is Now all this gray, it, all this gray I added in because the rush is talking modify all of the pronouns. Yeah, exactly, you know, the low and him, sober, who's sober? <laughs> okay. So you can read the text and we can just add in the Okay. Davar, the light pligi at the rafun, huh? He hold that that so okay. So I see Rabbi Nathan holds that the Papa is not arguing with rafun, but like us do, el l'shnuye rumia de kroy hadadi, and he is only coming to answer the the two pesukim. Vaki ka'amar loy kasha. Okay, but well, we got to get. We have to go very, very slowly here because he's writing so fast that it's. Uh, I'm, I I did a lot of pacing back and forth to understand what he's doing, and actually well, that's this. Why I'm, I'm, I'm sort of reading it without reading your grade. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree, but um, you can read the whole thing. It doesn't matter. I don't mind, but we have to slow down and and fill in the post. So, so again, read it through. Read it through. Read it we're going to have to see where he's going. In other words, in other yeah, words, fine. He says, in Dark Gemara, read the thing three times before you right. <laughs> try to put it together. Yeah, keep everything in. Mm -hmm. So he's saying his first error is that that the reason why Rabbi Nathan is talking about is because he's saying that that um, they're not arguing. Um, no, but, and he's only coming to answer the stira and the psukim, and there, and there's no kasha in the stira and the psukim. And it says metav, and it says yashiv. Why? Because it's just coming to say that even if he, that if he doesn't have metav, even if he gives him subin, it's metav, and he doesn't have to give him the metav of metalpolin. And really, the the pasuk is is it's simplistic, which is says meitav today or yishalim. What? So what? So I'm 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 um, okay. To me, this sounds like he's explaining Rav Huna, not Rav Papa. One second, I'm going to fix something up here. Who's he explaining? Who's he coming? Well, exactly. Who's he explaining? So let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I just want to change that. He's uh, coming, going to give an explanation, and based on the following explanation, it's now going to be understandable to us how Rapapa and Rapuna aren't arguing. Okay, so let's go slowly, first of all. Okay, right. up to this so point. Says, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, up to this point, we were under the the assumption that everyone is arguing. Rashi said that they were arguing. The Rift said that they were arguing, right? Right. That means Rav, Rav Huna was arguing with Rav Papa. Okay? So, now, if Rav Huna and Rav Papa are not arguing, then what, have we, what question have we solved? We always have to get, what is the question we're trying to solve here? What difficulty do we have? 
is then not arguing. Yeah. Um, well, what would be wrong with saying they're not arguing? And what, why is uh, the Gemara mentioned Rav Huna all the way down here? It's been mentioned together with Rav Papa and Rav, oh. and Rav Huna Bresh, are you sure? That's an excellent kasha. Let me be clearer. What is the rush? What question is the rush trying to answer here? The rush is trying to answer why there are many tam paskin like one side and not the other side. More specific. More specifically. Oh, because uh, because it's bus right. Okay. What did Rabbeinu Tam do with Basroy? Right? What did he do with the rule of Basroy? The riff was very clear. There's a rule that you're passing up. What did Rabbeinu Tam do? How could he not, how could he not Paskin like the Basroy? That's the Russia's problem here. Right. Now, if Vuna is not arguing with Rabbi Papa, does that solve the problem? Yeah. <laughs> because there's, if there's no argument, then he's not passing like the Basroy. He's passing. Yeah, right. He is. In other words, he is passing like the Basroy. Right. But to say that, we're going to have to now say that there's two different questions being answered between Rev Pop and Rev Huna. In other words, they agree in the halacha, but they were talking about two different issues. Now that's his now that's his gaonus over here and is that he to produce now two different questions between Rafuna and Repapa. Okay? So they're gonna come to the they're gonna they they're, they're question, the questions that they're asking questions that they're asking are different questions, even though the result is going to be the same. Right. They're really not going to argue about the result, but they just had two different questions to uh, ask. In other words, the result is the result. They both agree that, that, that Subin is only given when you don't have Kesem and Metav. Right? But, the, but we have an associated question a different question that Papa's asking. Let's put it that way. Okay. Right. So now, that's why I said that this is a, a very, very difficult rush to, to crack. And by the way, some of what I'm telling you is already, uh, uh, you know, 700 years later. You know, is a nachlas David. You know, because you could see that, uh, besides the fact that he's not spelling out all the indefinite. Uh, pronouns over there, right? He's also writing so quickly that you have to fill out much more than indefinite pronouns. You have to, you know, your head has to be in what he wants to say, okay? So first rule number one, we know that if I ask you what's the tachlis of the rush, the rush is to answer the problem, why did Rabbeinu Tam, what does Rabbeinu Tam do with the fact that Rav Papa is a busroy? Answer, Rav Papa is not arguing with Rav Huna. And therefore, the fact that the, even even Rev Hunas pasak like the Basroi, there's no there's no difference. If that's true, then that upsets the whole understanding that we've had up to this point. Because Rashi said they're talking about the same pasukim, the Rif said they're talking about the same pasukim, and now right. you're telling me that they're that that Rav Papa's doing something else. Okay, so now, if that's true, first of all, explain to me, well, what was Rev Papa doing? And getting back to your question. Now he's going to explain to us what Rev Papa was doing. Okay? Not what Rev Huna was doing. Okay? Right. So let's go. De Solver Rebbeinu Tam, I added that in. That Rev Papa, first of all, was not arguing Rev Papa. Osu, that's plural. Uh, who, who, okay. So, uh, who, who, uh, uh, how would you say it in single? I guess you would say us. Uh, us. Um, right. Okay. Let's say, right? Right. 
Okay, so asu means them, you know, in plural. So they, Reb Papa and Reb Hunu Reb Reb Shua, because you have to remember that there's two people over there, even though I just wrote Reb Papa, okay, because I just want to get the two Reb Hunas mixed up. But they, Reb Papa and Reb Hunu Reb Reb Shua, were not coming, Ella, to do what? L'shenuye rumuye de kro hadadi. They were talking about the conflict of the two pasukim, one to the other. Rev Huna was not talking about that conflict. Okay, why? Because as far as this answer is concerned, it's much better to say because Rev Huna was talking about the Mishnah, and it's much better to say Rev Huna Omer. Right. He was talking about the Mishnah. He wasn't talking about the pasukim. Okay, so since they had different subject matters, they can agree. They just, Rev. Papa is talking about the Pesukim, Rev. Hun is talking about the Mishnah, and there's no conflict. They all hold the halach exactly the same way. Right. Okay, so let's get this very carefully. As, as, now, remember Rashi, the Rif said, no, Rev. Hun is also uh, talking about the Rumi Kroy, right? Says the says the rush no according to Rabbeinu Tam that's not true Rev Hun is not talking about the Rumi the Kroy he's talking about Mishnah and it's only Rev Papa and Rev Huna that are talking about the two Pasukim right? right now exactly was there Rumi now wait a minute we learned that Rumi of Rev Papa and Rev Hun and Rev Shua was that Kesev Shavu Kesev and Metalton are all equal Right. Now, if you're going to tell me that really they agree with Reb Papa, excuse me, with Reb Huna, you're going to have to say that they also hold that you can only give Subin when you don't have Kesev and Meitav. Correct? Right. So, then, right. so then what problem was there between the Pesukim already? Why should the Pesukim be a problem? There's no problem. Pasuk says Meitav lechatchila, and the other pasuk says Yoshev b'diavid. So where's the Rumiya? Why does one have to conflict the other? Right? Yeah. Okay. So now the Rush is going to tell us a new question that Reb Papa had. Granted that you can only give Subin when you don't have Meitav, but I but but I have a question, says Reb Papa. Okay. So let's let's read this in. I'm uh, very very subtle. Now, so low kosh, and I added rumi the kroy. Okay. Okay. Yes, but now I don't think that was we understood the kasha. No. Yeah, but now that's why I added in my gray. Why did I add in my gray here? Okay, let, let, let you the terrets. The terrets will, will the terrets with one little three little words will clarify. Terrets. What was their terrets? The e. Um. I <clears> see <throat> the e lost the meter saw that. I feel you are very subin meter who. The. That the entire complete in my meter metaphor. Stop. Here's the whole key to the piece. Right, so if they didn't have Meitav Sadeh, they could even give Subin, which is Meitav, and they don't have to give them the Meitav Metalpha. Why? You see so much is left out here. Why? Because Repapa, in other words, let me, I'm going to spell it out here, you see. The question is that L'Chathila, I mean, Reb Papa knows that you the chatchili have to give kesef a meitav, and only if you don't have kesef a meitav do you do do you give uh, uh, subin, right? He agrees with Reb Papa. Right. But the question is, what, Lama, why when it comes to karka lichatchila you have to give the best, and why grant b'diavid you're going to give subin? Shove uh, a only be the evidence. But why there did the Torah allow you to give the worst? How come you don't give Bidi the best of your Shove 
That's the question that they were answering. In other words, we shoved in the rush, shoves in the shita of Rev Huna into Rev Papa, and he changes the question according to Rev Huna's halacha. Meaning, okay, and that's what he did. This is this is Guyana stuff. I mean, this is big, big. You know what I mean? This would take us around 250 years to figure out. <laughs> no, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do a thing like that. I don't think. This is Gaona stuff. I mean, who would ever think of doing such a thing? Okay, he has a problem. Why not the bus, Roy? So he says, you know something? The, maybe maybe Rebeno Tom holds that Rev Huna doesn't argue with Rev Papa. What? You mean Rev Papa holds sheet to Rev Huna? How is that? Oh, I'll tell you how. Because... Why lechatchila do we worry about meitav karka? And granted, b'diyevet when it comes to su uh, uh, shavikesiv, do we not worry about meitav karka? What's the difference? In other words, the pesukim don't cl clash with each other. I understand why you give shavikesiv only when you don't have karka. That's okay. That's fine with me. Karka is better than shavikesiv, so you give it lechatchila. But how come we don't have the same stringency b'diavid when we're giving metaltalin to give the best of your metaltalin? How come you can give subin? Why? It was that question that Rip Papa was answering. And his answer was, de'i lo mizdamen hacha mizdamen masach risa. Meaning, that there's no problem in metatlin bidiyevid that you have to give the best of metatlin because you'll always get your money back. But there's always a problem with land that you, if, if you're going to give land, even la chathila, you may not get your money, so the Torah said best. Right. <laughs> oh, it took me a lot of... Uh, a lot of pacing back and forth. No, because the words are so brief. You know what I mean? Right. Now, here's the other thing where, where I just wanted to bring out. I mean, this stuff I'm sure you know, but it doesn't matter. I said I have to, you know, who knows how millions of people will listen to this. <laughs> but whatever. The point is that there's a lot of thinking to do. The words are very brief and presume a very, very intelligent reader a reader that's very much involved. Like he's, you're talking to the rush now. I mean, he expects to you that you're on his level. So he doesn't have to say much. He just has to give these few little words which open up the piece. But for us, the reader, especially, you know, uh, uh, how many hundreds, 800 years or something like later. So the reader who is not that um, involved just has to think about what is the aim, and how is he trying to push that aim? And the truth is that this is what this is what the the people are going to be talking about. You know, they're going to have to put together what he says. So, and then they're going to be they're going to go further. This is going to be the this is going to be the basis of our piece because you know once we understand what the Russ says, he's really going to be the the since he since he's trying to decide between if and the Rabbein of Tom, so we're going to see this ramifications going to the Shulchan Aruch all the way down to the, the you know, Achronim and the Rosh Hashivas. You know, they're all being involved in these things. But the, 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 the pieces won't change, but the thinking will, the analysis will. So this is a very, very uh, a critical uh, rush here. This is a critical rush because he's now explaining Rabbein of Tom and the, the last piece that he's going to do, the next piece he's going to do, is then Mimachria. He's going to bring a Raya for the Rif from another Gemara completely. And that, I don't know if you could do in 150 years, or 250 years, may take you around 500, <laughs> to see his Raya. And once you see it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. But to, it's like a different Gemara. It's a, a, not a different Gemara. It's, just a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different place completely. It's not here. So he takes a raya from another place, and he's going to be machri according to the riff. Then all the people are going to chime in. What do you mean? Blah, 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 blah. And going to, there's going to be a big, big explosion here. This is the beginning of a tremendous, tremendous gewaltic uh, explosion in the whole base of Midrash. This fight between the riff and, and Rabbein Tom and, and the rush, who puts himself right in the middle of it. So we should really, you know, we have to be very, very, 
careful about what this particular rush is doing. Okay, so what is the first move here? The the move of the rush is to get rid of the problem of Vasroy by saying that Rev Papa agrees with Rev Huna. If Rev Papa agrees with Rev Huna, you know, everyone agrees. There's no there's no Basroy, uh, because there's no argument. So, so if that's true, then what is Rev Papa saying? We thought Rev Papa is talking about the 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 conflict of the two pasukim, right? So he's saying he's not really talking about the conflict. He agrees how to solve the two pasukim. He, he, I mean, he agrees with Rev Huna that that that. Shavu Kesev and Meitav do not conflict because Meitav you have to give Lechatchila and Subin you can only give Bidiyavid. So they really don't conflict. I mean that's how we're going to put the two things together. One's talking Lechatchila, Meitav, and Bidiyavid, uh, uh, Shavu Kesev of Yilsu. So they don't, they don't conflict. But Reb Papa has another question which is called the Lama question. Why? Why is the Torah Makbid on land Lechatchila to give the best? And uh, and Shavik Kesev, all of a sudden, you're not Makbid. So that was the, the 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 question that Reb Papa had, and he answered that really there's no such thing as gradation in in Subin because the only we we only interested are you gonna get your money back. So Subin, you'll always get your money back if you don't find it here, you'll find it somewhere else. But in land, even though you give it before Subin, it doesn't matter. With land always has a problem that you have a very few customers. So there is Makbid on land. So according to that answer, we have no more problem with Basroy because Rev Huna and Rev Papa agree. But they're talking about two different issues. Um, two different issues completely. One is the issue of what do you give first and second? That was Rav Huna's problem. You give first, you know, Meitav and uh, Kesev, and then you only give Bidiyavid, Shavu Kesev. And Rav Papa agreed with that. His only problem was, why? Why Why aren't? Why wasn't the Torah Makhbit on Meitav when you give it even Bidiyavid? And then he answered how well, he answered. So that's how the, the Rush first uh, uh, defends Rameinu Tam's problem about Basroi. Okay, let's read the second one. I, uh, let's read the second answer. And we have to go back, believe me. Oh, because we didn't finish this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to go back. Let, let's just read the second answer to get the, the, the pliggy, and then we have to go back very carefully. This is a, a very, very delicate piece. It's brain surgery here. Okay. Inami pligi adadi. Inami pligi adadi. They do argue. So I think yes. we have a question. If they do argue, why is Rabbi Natan Paskinen like... Uh, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he pass? Why doesn't he pass? Why doesn't he pass? Why doesn't he pass? Why doesn't or if that's the right word to use, important or or more, more. Um, I don't know what's the right word. He's, hala he's he's the halacha. Put it that way. Well, correct, right. When it comes to halacha, he is the ikar. Right. Right. So. Um, <laughs> so we we said. We, we, this is the second answer. That really, let's let's abandon this track that that Rip Pop agrees with Rip Huna. He doesn't. They really are arguing, just like the Rip says, like Rashi says, and the Rabino Tom agrees with that. So if he agrees with that, how do you get rid? Of, why is he Paskin against the Basroy? Because there's another Basroy. Who's more Basroy than <laughs> than Rip Papa? Um. Who's more best right than Rav Papa? Rav Huna. I don't know who's more best right than Rav Papa. The redactor of the Talmud. Do you see my my sign here? Oh, Ravashi. Okay. Ravashi. Now we know Mandakash made Ravashi. Right. We never even thought he was in the ball game. Right. 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 So the Rush says, but wait a minute, he's the Masadar of the of the Shas, right? How come he didn't put Rev Huna where he belongs before Rev Papa? 
How come he put him last when he should have been in the first position? If they're arguing, bring Rev. Huna first, or at least bring him before Rev. Papa, okay? Bring him before Rev. Papa. And then talk about Rev. Papa. And they would know the, the, we go according to the last authority. So since he brought Rev. that place, shoved him all the way to the end, so he gave him the last word, so to speak. So, so Rev. Ashi, it's, it's Rev. Ashi, who is the Messiah of the Shas, purposely took Rev. Huna out of place and put him at the end to show us that he's the Ikar. Right. That's what he said. That's the second terrace of the rush. Okay. Now, uh, right. now we're going to, yeah, yeah, we're going to stop. What's the, yeah, 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 no, no. I, I, I just wanted, I knew we were going to stop, so I just, I just stopped here. Okay. So we're going to have to go this right, very carefully. Part. Right. So the second terrorist is what? Terrorist yeah, we have to go over the first terrorist very clear. They're arguing. They're arguing. And and how did Reb, why did Reb Benu Tom paskin against the Svaro Basroy of the Rif? How could he? Tom. He paskin like Reb Huna. What about the Basroy? Well, he's paskin like, like all of them, according to the first terrorist. Or yes. According to the second terrorist. Oh, Ravashi. Who put Rev Huna out of order? Right. Okay. So, and we have to go over this very carefully because there's a beautiful um, depth in that in the middle in the you know in the middle piece. We just you know glanced over it. We're about you know uh, Pashtus to crawl and all that stuff. We have to go through with it again. And then when when we we really have to get this rush very very solid because he's going to be as I said the 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 battleground for everybody that follows. You're either going to like the rush or you're going to like him. You know what I mean? Of course, we're going to have some very interesting people who are going to defend. We have to defend the Rabbeinu Tom, you know. Uh, but that will be, this is going to be the, the, the as far as the real action, because of course the, the Rambam and the Rama, they have a whole different sheet altogether. So we're going to put, we're, they're also going to be very interesting, but they're not going to be in this, in the, in the, in this, in this gutsy problem here between the Riff and Rashi and, and Rabino Tom. So we're going to, the kids are, well, let's go over this again, okay? Maybe maybe have some time, just review it and say it over and just get it quick, crystal clear. And and then we'll we'll analyze it. And after we, we're comfortable with it, we'll do the third part, which is this fantastic um, proof that the rush is going to bring in favor of Rav al Fas from the Southern Gemara, okay? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it, I, I picked this piece because it does uh, vibrate through all the generations. You know, not every piece is like this. You know, but this piece really is. Uh, you can really see each generation handling what they handle, why they say it, and how everyone else is going to uh, react to it in the later generations. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, things to, and then okay, we have a lot of things to look forward to. <laughs> Okay, have a great day. Have a great day. Call to Okay, you Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Goodbye now.